Yeah, we're good. It tells me we're streaming now. It does? Oh, it says setting up our meeting. It says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook on my end. Okay. All right. Yeah, I see it now. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, Drake. So I invited you to chat about this whole face mask thing because I saw some comments on um, Facebook and people just going back and forth. And obviously everyone's talking about it and you know, it's a whole thing. So I don't know what the situation is like in Florida, but here in Texas, or at least in Houston, there was an order by the like a Harris County judge or something like that, or some kind of administrator saying that everyone had to wear them in public. And, um, but then the governor apparently said it's, they can't actually enforce it. So he's not going to find anybody. So there's technically an order you have to do it, but they're not going to find you if you don't. And I, like I went out the past couple of days and went to stores and stuff and no one said anything to me. Um, there were some stores like I thought I drove by, I just noticed like the FedEx store or Kinko's or whatever, or Office Depot or whatever it was. And it said that they wouldn't let you in if you don't have a mask. So I was like, well, I'm not shopping there anymore. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> sit online and good job. Um, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, and we'll find solutions. Now, that being said, I just want to say up front, I'm not suggesting that anybody break the law. Um, yeah. You know, because there's like we have friends in Panama where literally if you don't wear a mask in public, the military police are going to like fucking like throw you in a van. Like, so I'm not saying to be stupid about it. Yeah. Um, but I am in a place where I, in Texas, where individual freedom, it's like Texas is the America of the United States. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, seriously. So yeah. I'm fortunately in a place where it's not easy. Sorry. It's not hard rather to, say, I'm not going to do it, you know, yeah. um, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't see any point in doing it. Um, and obviously people can react and say like, Oh, you're going to spread the virus and all that stuff. That's not my starting point. I'm not interested in anybody getting hurt right. or being sick or anything like that. Um, but the reality is the more you do research on not only just this whole virus thing itself, but even wearing face masks, you'll see, and in talking to professionals, um, the ones who are willing to talk to you, they'll ne generally won't say it on camera, right? Uh, because you see what happens to the ones who do say it on camera. Yeah, they get they're the like uh, conspiracy theorists. But if I talk yeah. to people, just normal people who are in the medical profession outside of you know a public venue, they'll tell you, you know, and some will say the opposite, you know, and I understand that. So it's not like every single person going to tell you the truth. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that the more I look into it, it's like number one, they're not really effective at what is being what we're being told they're effective at. But also, there's there's health. Uh, there's detrimental aspects to it as well, like uh, reducing your oxygen flow within your, you know, when you're breathing. Um, also just reducing your ability to communicate with people. Like I've noticed some people, when I talk to them, they, uh, they don't realize they're wearing a mask. So they speak at their normal volume. Yeah. Say so like, what are you saying? Like Max was out the other day and the woman was talking and she was talking to Max as if it was normal volume and he couldn't understand her. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> Does he go, what's that? <laughs> right, and, I, and I was out with Max the other day too. And uh, he was walking around, like looking at everybody. And I said, like, look at everybody wearing these masks. I, I, before we even got out of the car, I told him everybody's mostly wearing masks. Not everyone, but many people are. And I explained to him why, you know, because they're afraid of getting sick and so forth, or they believe that it's going to prevent them or other people get, from getting sick. And I said, but we're not going to do that. We're not participating in that. Right. And um, there's nothing to be afraid of. Right. And it was funny because like last night we were, or not last night, the other night we were laying in bed and he randomly, like, as he's kind of falling asleep, he randomly says to me, it's like dark, you know, we're in the bed. He randomly says, Hey, Cam, if you get the virus, then you can, you're going to get sick. Right. And I was like, why do you say that? And he said, because, um, and I forget what he, he said, because um, something about Katie being sick, like, you know, like in December or so, I, he was, he made some comment about it. And I was like, well, I said, that may be, that may happen. I said, everyone responds differently to the virus. Some people don't get sick at all. And I might get sick and you might get sick. And, but that's something to be afraid of. Like our body's responding to something. Right. And there's, it's like, we have this fear of being sick, but we don't really understand what disease and sickness really comes from. I say, we don't understand. I mean, generally in the mainstream, the discussion level. Yeah. But you know, something I just thought of is like the level of discussion of, uh, medical things in general, health, medicine, you know, whether it's this coronavirus thing specifically or just general discussion around health and stuff, 
in the mainstream, the average person's awareness and in just the general mainstream discussion about it is the equivalent in terms of maturity level and understanding as the messaging and discussion in popular music. Mm. Like, like think about the way in which popular music talks about sex and relationships and life. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And, and purpose in life and stuff like that. Yeah. It's always from the starting point of just being a consumer. You know what I mean? Like you're going to the club to have sex or drink or have fun and live your life. And it's, it's always generally speaking, if it's in mainstream music, it's somehow meant to reinforce you to be a consumer. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. Like people are deliberately doing that. Although people obviously decide what's on and what's not you know, on the radio and stuff. Right. But it's just that message resonates with the general person who's living their life as a consumer in our economic system. So it makes sense they would want to consume that. And yeah. there may be an aspect of deliberate impulsing with that to keep things going as well. But even without that, it just makes sense why that would be the main kind of messaging. But the medical, the information we get exposed to is the same way. And the problem with it I see is, and this is kind of what the, the, the kind of starting point as to why I was like, hey, I want to make a video about this, because because when I saw people on Facebook talking about, um, you know, yeah, I understand, you know, you uh, have rights and so forth. I forget the exact wording, but somebody was making this this post like I understand, you know, it's about freedom of, you know, and, and, and rights and everything. But, you know, you should also wear a mask because, you know, science. Right. And maybe they were kind of being a little bit sarcastic. I don't know. And, but, but my point is just, just taking that as a jumping off point. I was just looking at how someone says science, right. And I'm like, how many scientific papers have you read about these masks? How many scientific papers have you read about yeah. the virus and like, what's actually going, you know what I mean? Like very few people have done any actual scientific research or anything in any of this stuff that they're talking about. Yeah. But they, they will say science. If you see the same thing, whether it's climate change or whatever it is, like people always say, but the science. Right. But I mean, let me ask you, man, like you and I both went to high school in America, right? I went to a private school. Did you go to private school? Uh, no, I didn't go to private school, but I was uh, in a magnet program. Okay. But either way, we went to the same curriculum. It's not like in a private yeah. school, we learned like the real stuff. It's the same shit, right? AP yeah. chemistry and all that stuff. You're not learning science. No. You know what I mean? No. Like no. you're just, you're just um, learning about science. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it, 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 you're not even learning, you know, I know you do like chemistry labs and stuff, but Im imagine like a science class where you actually looked at a real problem in the real world that no one knew the answer to. And you were taught, you were told, here's the scientific method, come up with a hypothesis, actually figure this out. Mm. They would never do that because That's how can you, cool. how can they test it? Yeah. I had a uh, math professor, Katie and I have talked about it many times at university of Houston and Gordon Johnson. And he, like we've said before, he was a distinguished mathematician for the NSA. Yeah. Clearly a smart guy. Yeah. And he started the Houston mathematics journal and stuff like that. So anyways, the way he ran his class was he would give you like, like I said before, he would give you like definitions of terms. This is like multivariable calculus, analysis, probability courses. He'd give you definitions and you'd copy those down. So it was like every word that they used, like derivative yeah it would be clearly defined as what that was based on previous definitions and he was spelled out the axioms and assumptions in the beginning as well so everything was built on what he'd already given you oh, that's and then after you copy those down then you would write down a couple questions on the board like you know like would the derivative of this function be this or what would it be and why you know or just if if this is true would this be true or prove that if this is true, this is true. Like he would give you some theorem that's probably already been proven before, most likely, but then you had to then solve it, meaning figure out the answer in detail and the reasoning behind it. And then you would present that information in class. Okay. okay. And I only did three problems the entire semester. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I only finished two of them. <laughs> Okay. One of them I kept working on and 
I think also just due to like finals and everything, I felt a lot of pressure. So I wasn't able to just creatively like really, I for sure if I spent more time on it, I could have solved it. Yeah. But it was just like, but but my point is I was really stressed about it because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fail this class because I only and that and that wasn't like I was like everybody else did 50 problems. Like that was pretty much the common thing for everybody, right? But I would always be eager to present when I would find the answer. I'd want to present it and I would I would take as much time as I could and I would always ask questions when other people were presenting and stuff. And I ended up getting an A in that course. Wow. And there was another guy who never presented and got a C or I think actually failed. Uh, there was another person who, who presented, but like gave up very easily mm. and couldn't solve their problems. And just like clearly had like this attitude of like asking for the answer and giving up and they got a C. Right. And what I realized from that the way he was great, because it's like, how do you, how do you get somebody an A or a B or whatever, based on if they only did two problems? Yeah. He wasn't measuring that. He was measuring, are you applying mathematical thinking? Are you continuing to do it and not give up? Like he was grading your abilities as a future mathematician. Yeah. Wow. That makes sense. Like, like he was like, I'm not going to sign off on you being a mathematician and getting a degree. If right. I don't think you can actually think like a mathematician. Yeah. So math mathematics is a way of thinking rather than a memorized set of facts. So I'm just bringing that up because um, it's the same thing with science in school. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not taught, we're not, they're not doing that. But how do you, how do you then um, systematically grade everybody, you know, in a very easy replicatable way, especially if your teacher is not a scientist. Mm, that's not. That guy was a fucking mathematician. So he could make the assessment. Yeah. He can trust his own assessment. The university can trust his assessment. But if your teacher literally has a, a high school and a four-year degree in teaching, and they're trying to teach you biology, they're just teaching you what they memorized or what's in the book. They're not doing science. Yeah. But then also, if you even have a scientist as a teacher, most kids are not going to be able to do that because it's just one of seven or eight classes you're taking. You know, we understand the whole context in terms of the education system. But I mean, like, the reason I brought it up is because when people are talking about, well, you know, because science, it's like, you don't even know anything about science. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. average person doesn't know, even the average doctor doesn't know science. That's what's been really cool seeing a lot of these interviews lately with, like, Dr. Kaufman, uh, that Butar guy, and Bruce Lipton, all these people. They're talking about the fact that in medical school, you don't study science you just memorize facts. Yeah. You're not being trained as a scientist like you would be if you were studying as a science degree at MIT, for example, right? right. Where they're being, you're being taught to think critically and they don't care what you memorize or don't because you have a reference book and you can use that reference book later. And so right now in New York, there's all these people dying because they're using the wrong ventilator protocols or X, Y, and yeah. Z because these people can't think critically and solve this problem. So you see what I mean? So yeah. the science doesn't know the answer apparently as to what's really the deal with this virus and why are people dying and some people aren't all this stuff. But it's a big problem there for a lot of other reasons, economic reasons, their hospitals are just the whole system, healthcare system in New York is apparently totally fucked and everything. Yeah. But the problem is everyone's using that to be like, see, there's a pandemic, everyone's dying. But they're not looking at all the other aspects of the information. Like what's right. going on in their hospitals? Like there was a a video recently from a nurse who was like saying like they're just killing people like not like they're like hey, hey kill them but like they're they're like going against the standard you know procedures of care and like you know making decisions yeah. just like all about expediency and just get the people in and out and like people are dying from getting too much insulin and stupid shit like that but then that's mm. COVID, you know and wow. so it's creating this whole thing where but then people somebody on the outside who's just watching the news then they're like okay there's all these people dying and then that fear comes up. And plus, how many movies have we seen as kids or growing up about like pandemics and like video games? And oh, yeah. Shit? Do you know what I mean? Even the zombie ones, the zombie ones. They, it all that's... plays into that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so just the, so imagine every time we watched a zombie movie and it was because of a plague. Yeah. And then, you know, that where the guys who got to be eaten and your heart's racing and you experience that adrenaline rush. Right. Yeah. All of that fear you're experiencing is allowing all those words like plague and like all these things to be imbued with all that energy. So when someone says it later, yeah. they're, able to, they're able to generate that energy at a very subtle level. 
That actually makes sense. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. Right. So so we're being programmed through all these things to relive that fear whenever those words are used. Yeah. And but the problem is if we didn't know the words in the first place, it would be hard to do that. So why do you think they teach us science in school? Oh, oh. You know what I mean? Why do they teach us science without teaching us science? They teach us about science so that way we have those words in our memory. Yeah. So when they talk about the RNA sequence, it's an RNA virus or whatever. We're like, oh yeah, yeah RNA, RNA. Right, right. Dude, but I've tutored kids in the past couple of years at like top private schools, and they're talking about shit in their biology class that I'd never even heard of. Meaning we didn't learn about that stuff in high school. And when we took biology, you and I, even though I'm only a few years older than you, but still, even when you took it, because they didn't know about, they, they didn't have these, these techniques. Like, I forget what there was one about, it was like RNA I or something. It was some kind of specific technique they use. I don't know the whole, I don't remember it. It was irrelevant, but, yeah. but it was like some specific genetic thing that they were learning in their, their unit on biology and genetics that we would have never studied because that technology was only invented in like 2005 or something hmm. or 2008 or 14 or something like that. You know what I mean? Meaning yeah. we would never even have learned about it. So um, I don't know why I explained that point, but my, but my point is even if you went to high school and you learned about stuff, you still don't really understand what's the current state of the art. You know what I mean? Like no one who's sitting here on Facebook going, well, you got to wear these masks because it keeps people safe because of science. It's like, does science actually say that, first of all? Is that actually science? Or is that just you using the word science? Here's my fear. I'm being told to do this. And if I feel like if I do this, then I won't have to be afraid. I won't die or whatever. And the cognitive dissonance is I'll use the word science because that'll, that'll shut down any discussion or any debate or any questioning of what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's what were you going to say? I was going to say, it's, uh, it's funny to see that, um, you know, one of my, one of my cousins actually made a post that was, uh, so you're telling me farts can go through drawers and pants, but a mask is going to protect me from a virus. <laughs> and, and it's funny, it's really humorous, but it's actually like, there's some sense to that. You know, um, we're talking about like, a gaseous thing going through clothes and uh, a mask for the most part, at least the ones that people are making at home and the ones that people have the most as access to, they're like clothes or what's even- the poor, What's the pore size? And then what's yeah. the apparent size of this virus? Yeah, it's like a hundred times smaller than the pore size. Like, like I watched some interview where the guy was like, that'd be like, um, oh, what was it? It was so good. It'd be like trying to keep mosquitoes out of your house by uh putting up a chain link fence yeah you know yeah. it's like that's right so in other words now i'm not saying i'm definitively the expert on all these details okay but the bigger point is um looking at how people believe they know science when they don't trusting in the statements of people they perceive as authority even though time and time and time again those authorities have been proven to say things that hurt people, that were wrong, that were proven wrong, that they admitted later and so forth. Like, for example, if you believe, well, I think the vaccines are safe and why would, the, why would these companies lie to us and all this stuff, even though they've been indemnified from any prosecution. Yeah. But the very same company that makes vaccines also makes like Vioxx. Yeah. Which killed people. And there's, yeah. you can go and look at it online. It's been proven, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. <laughs> And so it's, it just shows like people um, have this trust in the system that I think from a certain perspective, they don't, they don't want to um, question because of the cognitive dissonance. I mean, I remember when I was in high school or college rather, and we were talking about this the other night, um, you know, like going into all like the 9-11 stuff and all that. Yeah. And I remember the cognitive dissonance that I experienced. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was my first real experience of uh, no, actually, I say I would say it was my second experience of cognitive dissonance, but the most, in, the first really intense one that I was aware of. My first one was when my uh, high school, well, it was kind of like a middle school, high school sweetheart that I was no, I wasn't in a relationship with at the time. When I was in college, I went to a party at her house, and so it was somebody that I had a relationship with for a long time that I knew, right? And we were 
family friends for a long time. And I remember at a party, she said, I said, I don't know what the conversation was, but I remember her saying, oh, you still think your parents know everything? Cause she was like three years older than me. She was like already like in university, like, or outside, whatever. But yeah. I remember her saying that to me, like, you still think your parents know everything. And I just remember it like this feeling of like, what? Like I had never questioned that before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my parents just, it wasn't like I went around thinking my parents and everything. Cause I would argue with them all the time. I would question them on stuff. Like we would always, our conversations home from church would be me trying to prove to my parents that God didn't exist. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> yelling at me. It's not like I just implicitly trusted them, but at a certain level I did. Actually, I was going to say that, um, you know, I think most people's first experience with cognitive dissonance is we're taught cognitive dissonance from our parents. It, it's essentially like, um, you know, if, if you've ever been punished or spanked, right? Um, it's that, like, I'm doing this for your... Because I love you. Yeah, because I love you. <laughs> or, or because it's good for you. It's, you know, it's going to keep you out of trouble and, and everything. And it's like, you, if you just substitute parent for government, it's like, oh, yeah, they're going to do some things that we don't agree with. But it's okay in the long run because, you know, they really have our best interests in mind. But the truth and the reality is, no, they're fucking up. You know, and they don't always have our best interests in mind. They, uh, they come from that perspective. They seem to say, they say that and they seem to, you know, want that. Um, and at a certain level, you're like, well, they couldn't exactly want me to fail or, or no. you know, do anything bad to me. But they, the fact of the matter is they actually are doing something bad to you. You know, I think you've just hit on a really important point, which I hadn't really fully seen since you said it so clearly, which is that's what is going on right now. Like the people that I'm describing, just the general mindset of, oh, you need to wear the mask. You need to go be social isolation. You need to stay safe, stay home, all that stuff. Stay home, stay safe, whatever they say. Those are people that have not yet questioned that the system we live in does not actually have our best interests at heart. It doesn't actually know everything even. Like it doesn't know all the answers. It yeah. doesn't actually know the real science behind anything. It doesn't really even know how reality actually works. It doesn't even actually know what an atom or a molecule actually is. It doesn't, there's like at a fundamental level. So it's just like your parents, when you wake up and you're like, oh, they don't know everything. Holy shit. Like, holy shit. You know, and you realize like, oh fuck. I, like that's a that's an experience of cognitive dissonance. Yeah. And I guess for me, it's like, I'm only now making that, uh, it's like, obviously we know this, but it's like, now I'm really seeing that clearly as we're having this discussion, because I had that real massive experience towards the system when I was in college. So yeah. I had that first little one about my parents. And then years later in college, that's when YouTube was invented. That's when you started seeing like 9-11 and like all this other stuff. And it was just like, wait a second, you know, plus at that time, my life wasn't quite really working out the way it had been in the past, because specifically I wasn't going along with the path yeah. that had been set out for me. Yeah. The path that if I had just went down it, you know, I was at the Air Force Academy, which is extremely competitive elite school, you know, and I, I left and I made a decision. I didn't want to do that, you know, and a lot of things went into that, but it was like that because of that decision, it was like, you don't get any support then. You don't go along with what, where you're supposed to be then, then you don't, and it's not that like family members and stuff didn't help me. I'm not saying that there was some levels of people supporting me, but I mean, generally speaking from the perspective of like, you don't actually get to decide what you want to do with your life you know, from the perspective of the system. Yeah. You don't get to decide. We have a place for you. You do that. It's like a doctor. Your place is to sell these pills, back us up when we say something, Tell people to wear their mask, tell them to get the flu shot, whatever it is. If you do anything else, you're out, you're cut off, you don't get any more. We take your license, you can't talk, we're gonna put you in jail, we'll do all these things. Yeah. And it's like the same thing occurred to me at a sort of smaller scale when I decided not to go down that path that I was going down and really question, like, because, you know, one of the things that kept coming up in my mind when I made the decision to go to the Air Force Academy in the first place, and I probably told this before, is this thought kept coming up of, I wanna be elite. Yeah. But it was within the context of my self interest. Like, I want to feel elite. I want to be perceived as elite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the same reason people want to go to Harvard, if we're being honest. The same yeah. thing. Yeah. But 
fast forward to where I'm at now and I realize what being the elite actually implies. Yeah. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way for anybody watching. I mean, if you want to be elite, you have to now take responsibility for the system because that's what the elite do. We just have to do it from the perspective of what's best for everybody. So it's not like I don't want to be elite. We actually already are elite, whether people realize it or not. Like if, you're, if you make more than 32,000 a year, you're in the top 1% of income globally. We've talked about that in other yeah. places. But if you question things at any level, you don't get any support. Or in other words, support starts being withdrawn. You don't, your friends don't agree with you anymore. You can't go to do the same things you can do anymore. Like you don't wear the mask in some places. You can't go get food. You know, we're, and, we're getting impulse with that, like on every level. Like I, I can remember just from what you're saying, do you remember uh, if you wanted to get a scholarship just to go to college, like you also had to check off this box that said, if there was a draft that you were, you know, accepting that you, you could be called for the draft. Yeah. But, but if you didn't check that box, you were not eligible for any scholarship. Like this, yeah. 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 yeah it's like we're constantly getting um we have to make those decisions to go along with the with the uh system whether you want to or not because i know i didn't want to be selected for draft you know but i was like i want to get these scholarships so let me just check this box you know um i want to show you this thing real quick i'm sure you've seen this before okay i'm going to share my screen real quick uh how do i do that here we go Let me just yeah. take that off. I've like, seen photos, but I have not watched this show at all. I mean, <laughs> it's funny because when they take the mask off, this is what it looks like. Yeah. That's why they wear the masks apparently, right? Yeah. But isn't it fascinating? Like women wore this as protests against like Brett Kavanaugh and stuff in, in order to like imply that women are being muzzled and controlled and all this stuff. And I think the average person who was participating in it, that's what they were like, you know, unwittingly, that's what they were thinking, right? But the reality is just like programming everybody to be okay with that. Like, think about it. like, why is it that that was a sign of like, hey, you can't muzzle me. Like, it was like a protest. Yeah. Now people are wearing it to prove they're a good person. That's weird. Do you know that, and Katie was telling me this because she's watched that whole series. I haven't actually seen any of it. Okay. Um, but she told me that the, the series itself, it was written by Margaret Atwood, who is a really cool author. I have some of her books. Um, she wrote it as an allegory about the Iranian revolution, the religious revolution. Oh. And there was like women when that revolution occurs in the streets telling women they should wear the hijab and the, all that shit. So it was kind of like a, it was like a patriarchal orthodox religious cultural revolution. And that's what I guess the Handmaid's Tale is supposed to be a sort of play on that. Yeah. But it was about that. And literally what we're seeing right now is mostly women like Karens, right? I'm probably gonna get banned off of Facebook now because they said that. But you know what I mean? Like, like mostly like, you know, you got to wear your mask, say, stay safe and stay home. You know, you got to wear your mask, do your part, all this stuff. And it's like, that's literally like the women in the streets in Iran in the seventies, like saying you should wear the hijab because it's modesty and all, or whatever that fucking argument was, you know what I mean? Right. Right. And it's like, it's fascinating to me. Oh, okay. So I'll share this with you since I, was, I have it up here. Cause I thought this was just so cool. All right. So let me take this one off. Okay, so I found this right before I decided to, when, when I texted you earlier to do this chat, uh -huh. I just went online and I write, because I, I mean, I've already read some things and papers and stuff, but I just wanted to see like, what could I find quickly that I could use to show? And this is the, one of the first links that I found, okay. right? Let me move this, okay, there we go. Um, the face mask debate reveals a scientific double standard I love this. It's like no one complained about the lack of evidence for 20 second hand washing. So why did we treat face masks different? Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but like the, the, if I'm placing myself in the shoes of the average person reading this, like who it's speaking to, the, 
what I get from that is like, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't question the masks. Right. Like you didn't question hand washing, so why are you questioning masks? Right. Right. That that's kind of what I get from it, right? Yeah. Scientific double standard. But there's a difference between washing hands and wearing a mask, isn't there? For sure. Washing and hands. What's is really fascinating too is they're saying that there is a lack of evidence for washing hands. That's interesting. Like how how long has that been the case? Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, like, because you know, if you go just into brainwashing. Yeah. No, huh. I wash my hands. So if anybody watching out there, <laughs> you don't wash your hands. But I mean, you know, like actually, to be honest with you, I don't wash my hands that much. And I don't get sick that much from like plagues and pandemics and shit like that and the flu and all that stuff. Yeah. You no, know, I'm not one of those people who's like every time like anything happens, washing my hands, wear hand sanitizer. We don't even have hand sanitizer, right? After we use the restroom, we tell the kids to wash their hands. Right. right? But generally speaking, as a person, I don't generally wash my hands like right before I eat necessarily, unless it's like I've really, you know, like I haven't washed my hands in a long time. I'm not yeah. like obsessive about it, is what I'm saying. And I think most people aren't. Yeah. Now people are gonna say, oh, well, that's why this disease is spreading and stuff. You know, okay. So, just bullshit. To, to that point, to that point, um, I was actually, I, I remember right now, because I was watching a doctor say this recently, but I'm remembering from uh, H1N1 and, and all of that and swine flu and all that. Do you remember when like everybody had hand sanitizer and hand sanitizer sales went up like dramatically? Like yeah. you can look up articles for it and everything. But at that same time, there were uh, things coming out in the, in the news and in articles, basically just saying, um, overdoing it with the hand sanitizer is killing the good bacteria on your hands and actually, you know, possibly making you even more susceptible to sickness and it's drying out your hands. It's worse for you essentially. And, uh, and they're saying that with the hand washing too, it's like, you're overdoing it, you know, at a certain point. Um, who were like the big people doing the hand sanitizer? Wasn't Johnson and Johnson, I'm assuming would be one of them. Yeah. You know, they're one of the ones coming out with the vaccine for coronavirus. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I just saw it earlier. I'm like, so it's like, wow, isn't that convenient? Like, you know, and, and people, so the, the, here's the thing. Anything that you or I say in this context to someone who has not had walked through that cognitive dissonance of totally trusting everything the system says, like fundamentally, they're going to take everything, anything we say into Yes, but da, 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 da. like they're gonna, they're not gonna be able to just listen and look at the common sense of it because they could say, well, Johnson and Johnson's a very good company. Like they make healthcare, you know, health products and like, you know, like they, they're not even gonna think about what it really is. Right. Like that it's an industrial corporation that doesn't give a fuck about you, just wants to make money. Like if I say McDonald's, people will be like, well, yeah, of course McDonald's wants to fuck you over. <laughs> right. You didn't right. think that until Super Size Me. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah that's the cognitive dissonance like uh people are not really thinking for themselves and the thing is like it's not like i i want to die right. it's not like i want to be unhealthy and sick all the time so the, somebody who's watching who might be like well why would you know you why would we question these things look it's not because we want us to be sick or other people to be sick or anything like that. So that alone, you should just realize we're human beings just like you who has the same general point of wanting to live a good life and everything. Yeah. Because people think like, oh, we, there's just these uneducated Christians, you know, who just don't believe in science and like just want everyone to die. Like that's the protesters who are protesting the lockdown and they yeah. just don't care about science because they believe Jesus is going to come on a cloud and save them and all this stuff. And it's like, you, you demonize other people like they're just these uneducated idiots who just don't care about the value of life like no they're just people just like you yeah and they they want to have a good life and not experience pain and all that stuff just like anybody else yeah. so if if in other words like i have the same self-preservation instinct as everybody else i don't want to be sick but that doesn't mean i have to be manipulated by it yeah i mean so we can be we can have the concept of Living is best, dying is not best. Okay. Right. right. But that doesn't mean I have to be afraid of dying. 
Because the problem is when you're afraid and that fear is coming up, like we were talking about with the zombie movies and stuff, then you can be manipulated. And you can be manipulated by people who just want to sell you something and don't care about the long-term benefits or, or, or deleterious effects. And in fact, if there's harmful effects, that's actually good because they can sell you more stuff later. Like if Johnson and Johnson can sell you a hand sanitizer that lowers your immune system and then you get sick more easily, and then they can sell you a flu vaccine because you're at risk of like getting sick because you have a compromised immune system. Why would that not be good for them? Right. right. And if you really think that they wouldn't do that if they could get away with it, it's like, you're extremely naive. So let me ask you this kind of uh, playing devil's advocate here, okay. but it's a question that comes up in my mind. The difference between uh, being set in your ways and not wanting to move forward versus like actually considering, you know, uh, is this a, a good move to make going forward? And, you know, obviously we're talking about like face masks uh, as the example here, but, you know, there's tons of other examples that you can use of, you know, are you, are you just being stubborn or am I just being stubborn? Right, right, right. Or, right. You know, well, I, you know I, actually I'm really glad you said that because that was the real reason why I wanted to make the video. Okay. Because you can sit there and comment with people on Facebook, but you don't really get a chance to really give your viewpoint. You know what I mean? Of like your clear point. And the whole reason I wanted to explain and express myself was because what I want to get across to people, which is what you can't really do in the comments because you get all these distractions and shit is. Okay. We play lip service to ideas. Like if you give up a little bit of freedom, then they're just going to get give you to give up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And if you put a, a frog in water and turn up the temperature slowly, they'll boil and they'll die and they won't jump out. Like we understand all these things, but then when it's happening to us in front of our eyes, well, yeah, but in this particular case, it's, it's not, that's not what's happening. You know what I mean? The government wouldn't lie to us about this or this or that, or the, you know, the doctors wouldn't lie to us about this. Like, so that's why I wanted to make it to, to give the perspective of what I see happening is a slippery slope. And I'm not the first person to say this. A lot of people are saying this right now, but right. it's a slippery slope. It's like, getting everybody to get a flu vaccine or most people get a flu vaccine every, every year. Now it's normalized that you go and get vaccines, not just when you're a little kid, but when you're an adult. Mm. Now it's a lot easier for them to be like, hey, you need a vaccine for this particular thing, right? But if you were to look at it from the perspective of, a, a company trying to sell you something that doesn't have your best interest at heart. Like, like McDonald's is always going to tell you that their burgers are healthy. Yes. Are you ever going to hear McDonald's say, actually, yeah, if you eat our burgers all the time, you're going to have heart disease. I don't think you'll they're hear them not say, gonna exactly say that. that. In yeah. fact, they're going to put commercials of Olympic athletes chowing down on some chicken nuggets before they go down the slopes, which they did. I remember that shit. Yes. Yeah. And, and basketball players and yeah, anybody they can get to. Right. Eat that which, yeah. Okay, so from that perspective, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I just give the example of the vaccines or the flu vaccine or all that kind of stuff, right? But with the masks, it's like, when, normally when you go outside, do you really think much about any restrictions? That you, let's say you live in America, okay? I'm just talking about America. I know the place is different. But when I go outside, you know, I just go out and I do what I want to do. I don't think too much about it. Someone yeah. could say, oh, but you put clothing on. Oh, you give up your freedoms. You put your clothing on. Okay. <laughs> I've seen you put clothes on before. Right. Yes, you do put your clothing on. Um, and there's a practical reason for that. And someone can say, well, there's a practical reason for the face masks. Okay. So this is why I said before. I'm not suggesting anybody do anything that's against the law or something, right? Or, or that's reckless or stupid or whatever. Right. Um, you should do what's practical for you in the context of your environment, right? So let's just take the clothing example. And I, cause I think this will give people insight into how I look at things, right? Sure. So why would I say, oh, everyone should just be allowed to not wear clothing. Okay. Is it the case that we live in a highly sexualized society oh, where yeah. we're manipulated based on sexuality? Yeah. And that 
For example, could the average American guy handle going to a nude beach? No, it'd be very exciting. You see what I mean? Like, it's just not practical. Yeah. Right. Um, so unfortunately, that is that is a fact at the moment where we don't have sex and, and our bodies and all of that in the proper context. And that has a lot to do with the way we're educated and the way we're taught by our parents and a lot to do with religion, making us feel ashamed and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Now, in an ideal society, would that mean everyone would just run around nude? I don't know. Probably not. Probably I mean, I can not. see practical reasons for, you know, not wanting to expose your son to the skin 24 seven, you know, and like, you know, this all kinds of things, you know? Yeah. Um, and so what I'm saying is like, yes, it's a practical point. And it's also perhaps somewhat of a limitation. Okay. At the same time, I'm not, I don't see any practical point to argue for why we should all be running around new. Like it doesn't change much. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would rather say if, if you were like a person who was like, no, like we should be free to whatever, wear whatever we want and all this stuff. Okay. Then the responsibility would be to figure out how we can educate society in a way where people don't get stimulated by seeing someone's body. But you can see that's gonna take a lot of like education and stuff, which I, which I would agree with. Like, I would like to live in a society where even as a male, I'm not programmed to be stimulated if I see a naked woman, for example. Yeah. You see what I mean? Where no thought happens, like it's just not there. I don't think that we're even close to that yet. You see what I mean? And especially because of all the programming that's done and like images and like look at movies and TV and stuff like that. And like and commercials, products yeah. like Coca-Cola bottles are even designed on the shape of a woman's curves on purpose, right? So there's a lot that's manipulated and that's what Freud exploited and talked about as the unconscious and like Edward Bernays went into, if you watch Century of the Self and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So am I arguing that we should, you see what I'm saying? So someone could be like, well, if you're saying we shouldn't wear face masks, we should we're just not wear clothes. Like, why, are you, why aren't you arguing against you know, nudity laws? This is already a fact. We've already accepted it. It's an ingrained part of society, okay? But now we're taking the next step. So even if you think it, they're somehow related, that's just called associative thinking, right? So let's just put that aside now. And, and, and just on that point, you know, you could also go further and say, well, if you should wear a face mask, why not wear a hazmat suit? Like every time you go outside. You could go the other way, exactly, right? Yeah. You see people doing that. But, <laughs> but like, let's just look at the bigger implications of uh, the, the face mask, which is why I wanted to really talk about it. So you can see like my thought process and you, I can hear your thought process on the point, right? It's like, what I see is you're agreeing to live in a world now where everyone's afraid of getting sick all the time. Yeah. And think about this. What if our immune systems and our health and everything was being depleted to such a point that we're all going to be really susceptible to getting sick? Right? This is what Kevin Trudeau is saying. So if you knew that was going to happen, what would you make sure everyone does? If you knew that everyone was at a point where they were going to be very susceptible to getting sick, yeah, uh, make sure that they're protecting themselves so they don't get really sick, at least all at once. Okay, that, okay, that is the first thought that comes up. Yeah. But that's buying into the idea that it's the viruses and stuff that's making us sick. Mm. But what's actually making us sick? Uh, I mean, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying viruses don't. So for right, a person, right. okay, actually I am saying that, but for a person who doesn't agree with that statement, just put that aside and just say what other things are obviously contributing to us being sick and unhealthy. Oh, our lifestyle for sure. Right? For sure. Like the way that we eat, you know, uh, not going out and exercising, not even going outside for a walk and, and being in the sun, you know, those kinds of things. Even more important. Yeah. All of those things. And even more importantly, our mindset, it's, it's, it's just like our programming of, of constantly searching for energy, exploiting every relationship we can get for our own self-interest to, to, to participate in just generating energy out of conflict. So at a fundamental level, like we use our relationships with our, our, our wife or our husband or our kids or our coworkers or 
TV. Like it's very obvious people do it with TV. Yeah. Why do you watch a horror movie? Oh, because it gives you that adrenaline and like, you know, you, you want to be scared. Yeah. Isn't that exactly why psychopaths actually murder people? Oh, wow. <laughs> that is, that is. They actually want to experience it for real. Yeah. You know, I'd never even considered that. Yeah. But we want to experience it too. But, oh, I'm a good person. So I just watch it being simulated. Wow. Okay? This is the same reason why men watch porn. Okay. Wow. Because we want to simulate, we want to have sex with the porn star and all these people or whatever. Yeah. I can't do that because I'm a good person or whatever reason limitation. So I simulate it and I get the feeling that way. Yeah. But those are extreme obvious examples, but let's just take it into a personal relationship. Like you just looking for some kind of reason why you're the center of the universe and why you should get all the feelings and attention and everything. So like anything where you can get more just like energy from something, right? A lot of it happens in a very automated way. So the way people talk to their kids, it's like they're constantly shitting on them. Yeah. You yeah, know? sure. And it's just like mistreating them. And, and, and it, there's so many like, do, people do it with their spouses. Those two points alone, that's where every, anybody could relate to it. Because maybe you're not the guy who wants to be a psychopath, right? But you're the person who, in your relationships, you are a psychopath. And everybody does it. It's not just the psychopaths. You know what I mean? Because yeah. at very subtle levels, people are exploiting those relationships. And here's a perfect example. Anybody who wants to put it to the test, just go on Facebook and say, I'm, I want to create a world that's best for all. And everybody needs to change and give up their self-interest and only do what's best for everybody. Oh, everybody would hate you and be completely against that because you're taking away you know, their self-interest, but uh, they'll see it as you're taking away their rights and their freedoms. And, and okay, how about, this? Their autonomy. how about this? You don't have to change if you don't want to. Uh -huh. I'm not going to be in a relationship with you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. I'm not going to be your, your son or your daughter or your mother or your father, you know, I'm, outside of your basic responsibility, yeah. you have to take care of your children. Outside of that, I'm saying the relationship of like, if you say, I love you, I'm not going to say, I love you back. Like, I, I, you are another human being just like me. And I want to work with people who have principles who want to make their world best for all. Right. So if, for example, I say, look, you know, you, you have to uh, question that limitation, this particular limitation within yourself. You're not being self-honest. And they're like, why are you always trying to make me feel a certain way? Blah, blah, blah. And I just, you know, I just want to be friends and feel this way. And I just want to focus on this. Yeah. yeah. You want me to be a slave to your relationship so you can maintain that memory because that memory is transferring energy to you based on the way you've defined the relationship in your mind. Yeah. I don't want to participate anymore. Oh, you're a terrible person. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. But if I stand up for principles, that's a being a terrible person. So if I say the same exact thing in reverse of, I want to be in a relationship with you only if you stand with the same principles and we're going to work together, make the world better for all. That person is evil, but not the person who just doesn't want to be your friend because they don't give you, you don't want to give them the feelings and shit that they, because what do friends do generally is they just support each other's weaknesses. That's a great point. That's a really great point. Um, they don't challenge each other. Yeah. And, and you I see made... people, like if I challenge them, then they don't want to be friends anymore. Some people like you, for example, we challenge each other and that's fine. Yeah. Because we come back to the principles. Yeah. Right. So we're friends. Yeah. But it's based on principles rather right. than you like you're always going to give me a good feeling even if i do something that's not best you see what i mean i'm not going to challenge you on it because i don't want to lose you if i say something that makes you upset i might lose you that's right friend, you see right. so i'm not going to challenge you fuck that yeah and that's what's going on right now in the world is like there's these there's two sides it's like i can say things that are just go along to get along and everybody stay home stay safe and wear your masks and all this stuff so people will think i'm a good person all that shit or I can look at the information for myself and say what I see and stand up for that. And if people don't like it, then fuck off. Like, who cares? Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? But going back to why, why are we talking about it? Let's say you say okay to the mask now. When is the pharmaceutical companies and the mainstream news and everybody going to start talking about you need vitamin D? You need vitamin K. You need vitamin A. You need sunlight. You need healthy, you need greens, you need 
organic food that's that's nutritious and the fact that our soil is depleted from from nutrients and you need minerals and you you need a healthy I mean you need to go walk you need to um have healthy relationships with each other you need to educate your children in the most effective way you need to not just send them to the school system to memorize shit you need to support their actual ability to process information when are they going to start talking about all that like after we all have the masks then they're gonna be like okay cool now we're all safe but now let's talk about boosting our immune system let's talk about healthy eating habits they've yeah. never been talking about that yeah have you ever gone to a doctor and they were like look before we talk about any kind of medication let's just talk about what are your eating habits like and are you willing to change them? No. You have diabetes, but look, you know, like maybe if we change some, no, it's just like, here's a prescription. You know, there's a, a great book that I read uh, some years ago called Eat to Live, right? And when I was reading this book, uh, is written by a doctor, uh, I forget his name, um, but uh, when you're reading it, he talks about how he's talked to other doctors and, and he still has a practice. And so he's still seeing people. And what he basically says is, look, you know, the starting point of all your problems is you have an unhealthy lifestyle, unhealthy diet, you know, all these things. If you just change your diet, if you change your diet to eating these uh, types of foods and, and getting these nutrients, you will get better. Yeah. you know, and, and he's seen it within his own practice. So right. he he's talking from like experience of like, no, this practically works, not just some theory of like, oh, these, these ideas sound great. And, and but this is obvious common sense, right? Yes. But he goes further to say that he's, he talks to other doctors and asks them, why don't you tell your patients? Like, like, are you aware of this information? Like, why don't you tell your patients that? And the excuse that they give is they say, well, if I tell them that they're not going to do it anyway. So I just write this prescription for them because right. they, they want a magic fix. This is what I experienced when I was a full-time tutor. If I sat down and told them, okay, you need to go back and learn how to read and you need to study, you need to focus, you need to do all this stuff. The children never would do that. Yeah. So as a tutor, what do you do? Okay. Let me just tell you the thing to memorize and just move on. That wasn't okay. I wasn't okay with that. Yeah. So I understand what it's like being the outsider of, a particular thing you know what i mean because like in the school system the teachers what are they doing no no no. you just do the curriculum and some kids are going to pass and some kids are going to fail and you got the smart ones and the slow ones and everything yeah they don't want to go to the fundamental point so it's like what we're doing with techno tutor the fundamental point of education is no it's like the doctor saying you need to eat healthy to do all these things there's fundamental things you need to do in your education yeah so let's look at that point though about the masks if I knew nobody was going to eat healthy and do all this stuff and they were just going to remain being immune compromised. And it was also in part because of what I'm doing as drug companies and all this stuff. And I'm not promoting healthy eating anyways. Right. But Hey, but that excuse doesn't really apply. It may apply to one doctor, right? Cause they can't change that person's frame of reference. Right. But if all the doctors and all the WHO and the governments all got together and said on TV, you can't promote drugs unless you first promote healthy eating habits. Yeah. That would change overnight. Yeah. If every Disney show you watch, the family sat down and they were eating salad and they were like, oh, don't you know, take your vitamin D supplements. You know what I mean? Like you could easily impulse people just like you impulse them to be spoiled little whiny brats who just want to fucking create drama. Who think they're princesses and, and exactly. Princes. Yeah. And it's your special day. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have my special day. And you have the, you know, that bold bridezilla thing. You're, yeah. you're creating that through imagery. You could right. easily create the other thing, but that's not profitable. If I told you the answer and it was something you could do by yourself, why would I, why would you have to buy something? Yeah, no, of course not. Of course, there could be the whole industry around people just getting support constantly. So you, there is still ways that money can be made doing that. So it doesn't have to be that way, but maybe there's other reasons. And this is why it's easy to then, once you start realizing if you were able to question and go through the cognitive dissonance of the world system doesn't have my best interest at heart, then you start to think maybe there are people directing this on purpose because they're abused people and they just want power and control and it benefits them if everybody else is sick and stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, it just makes things easier for them. Like, how do you live like a billionaire and have the control of a billionaire if everybody's a billionaire? Oh, you can't. You see what I mean? Like the That's only way right. you can live like a Bill Gates or someone like that is if most, it's like the contrast. Yeah, of 
cut this is why people who are into spirituality and positivity they don't get it man it's like i'm here to experience contrast okay well only one person kind of gets to be like jeff bezos and bill gates yeah so it's like he gets to experience that side of the contrast so for him to experience the contrast of being a billionaire what else has to exist everybody else has to experience the exact opposite and you just gave permission to that yeah <laughs> by saying i want to experience contrast it's like see it's like we're playing into all this because we were told information we didn't really process anything for ourselves and we accepted it because an authority told us yeah so if you're willing to okay but this is the point i was going back to but the masks what does it mean to mask something to cover something to hide something okay so if i know everyone's immune compromised and they're eating poorly and i don't want to change that because I run McDonald's and I want to give them unhealthy, cheap ass fucking food and all these little things. Yeah. Make them think that you're sick because of a virus and you're wearing the mask because of a virus. And if you get sick, well, you're just unlucky. I mean, the virus is really more violent than we thought. It can go through microfiber filaments and shit. And like, wow. Just like, for example, if the economic system had to crash at some point, anyways, we might as well have everybody at home. So there's no more, so not working or anything like that. And, you know, the support, the reason why you can't buy beef is because of the coronavirus, not because there's most problems in the supply chain were happening at some point anyways. Yeah. Because we're not managing the system in a way that's best for everybody. And guess what? Jeff Bezos is still going to get his beef. Yeah. Which is yeah. weird. And yeah. our kids aren't. You see what I mean? They're okay. And they'll replace it. Why do you, okay, think about this. What if fundamentally, it's a psychological problem and the supply chains are not set up in a way that's best for everybody. And it's just like you said, the excuse of the doctor, but people aren't going to eat the way we want anyway. So, so we can't solve the supply chain problems in the context of it's a system that's highly competitive and profit driven. So th this is like, we're getting to the limit of that system. Well, what's the solution now? If you're Bill Gates. Man, uh, if I'm Bill Gates and and also, you don't believe people can fundamentally change and get to well, his I life. have to take control. I have to take okay. control then yeah. and yeah. get people. Well, well, actually, first off, let's, let's, let's maybe get rid of some people. Right. <laughs> population. Yeah. That's why but they have that solution. Yeah. I mean, is, is it because they're in a satanic cult and all this other shit? Like, the reality is they don't believe people can fundamentally change. Right. And like, remember when you were telling me that quote about Bill Gates, what he always says to everybody? Or will you tell me? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where he's like, uh, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. So um, everybody thinks he's like this really nice guy and all this stuff because of his PR. But right. Just but tell the story a little bit more. I'm going to go use the restroom real quick. I'm still listening, though. But <laughs> okay. tell, tell that story, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I was watching this in, I think probably in that Netflix documentary where he's talking about, um, where different people are talking about like, different things about Bill Gates, about how Microsoft came about and everything and uh, how he was as a child and all of this. But then when he's in Microsoft itself and he's running Microsoft, they said, uh, you know, they'd never heard somebody say so often, um, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And actually, uh, I, th I think they might have referenced it in the Steve Jobs biography that I read as well. Uh, because they were making a comparison with how Steve Jobs was just so abrasive and just like, you know, an asshole, really. Um, but they were also saying that Bill Gates, you know, he has this persona in the public, um, but in his corporation, in his own business, he was in a, a very similar way, just like being really aggressive and just like, oh, Actually, I was just watching um, a Paul Allen interview, and obviously this is old because he's dead, right? Oh, that's why we were talking about the other day, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so in the Paul Allen interview, um, they, he was just talking about how uh, it, it opens up basically with him basically saying Bill Gates was not the nicest person to work with. He was, he was an asshole, essentially. And he was even saying how with Bill Gates he would have not conversations, but arguments, screaming matches that would last for hours because he was the kind of person that's the way that he liked to communicate. Like you couldn't just tell him, 
you're wrong and here's why. He wanted to flesh it out in the form of an argument over many hours and he said it was exhausting. Uh, and, you know. I used to be exactly like that. Really? That was like my relationship with my girlfriends and everything was just like wanting that like long ass argument. Really? Oh yeah. I can kind of see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? But now yeah. it's like, I just want to solve the point and get done with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. You see, the thing is you can take on an expression of yelling and screaming if you need to in a moment, if it helps get through the point. Yeah. But it's like when it's being done because you like it, see, that's where I was talking about that energy point. Yeah. It's like, you just like doing it. It's not about solving a problem or whatever. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, it's interesting to see that he was described in that way. And then, uh, you know, obviously he's super intelligent. If you, if you're not aware, you know, he reads 150 pages an hour. I know you know this. Um, and he retains, they say 90% of that. And he reads six hours a day. I've heard it multiple times, you know, from multiple different people saying it, that he reads six hours a day. Warren Buffett, you know, one of his best buddies, they say they both read six hours a day. And he says, Bill reads way faster than he does, right? And so it's, it's no wonder how he could uh, take Microsoft to the point that it, it got to as far as being this behemoth, um, not only because he's reading so often, but they asked him at that time what he was reading. And he's talking about college thesis uh, papers on computer science, like things that nobody's even thinking of reading. You know, he's reading all the latest research on that. Of course, he's going to know all of that. He's going to be able to make the decisions better than anyone else. And so they got to that place where they were a monopoly. And then the government tried to uh, basically break them up and originally found them guilty. And part of the reason why they found him guilty was because the way that he played off his persona was just like an unlikable person. It, like the way that he was asking, answering the questions and the deposition and everything, they were just like, oh, this guy's an ass. And so when he came back the next year, he had a PR firm just to work on his image so that he could go back in and be more likable and, uh, you know. With the appeal, basically. Exactly, exactly. And so I guess he must have just stuck with that ever since then, because, you know, you've seen that. Um, I think he posted it even, the, the Joe Rogan thing where uh, he's like, I don't buy this, this get up with the, with the cardigan and everything. He wears that everywhere he goes. Um, and he does look like Mr. Rogers, you know. Uh, this is the that. thing with highly creative, intelligent people is you know how to adapt and change. But here's the thing with that, with just like wearing those clothes, like you or I could hire somebody right now who could tell you what to wear that would make you look like. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is like, he's willing to adjust. Oh, for sure. For you see sure. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if it's like, for example, I look at my own myself within learning how to sell. I had to adjust elements of my personality in those contexts. Yeah. You see what I mean? And being able to relate to other people in different contexts, I had to be able to adjust those things, right? Yeah. Even as an adult, which most people are not able to do because they're still, they're not working with their, their natural learning ability, which is the whole point we're saying with TechnoTutor. And so like with Bill Gates, for example, he's seeing most people don't have access to their natural learning ability at any level. Yeah. He may not be thinking of it like that, but I mean, he just thinks it as human nature is human nature. Yeah. He's like a superior human being. Yeah. And everybody else is fucking retarded. That's how he looks at it. That's the stupidest fucking thing he's ever heard. You see what I mean? Yeah. So if it's his point of like, how are we going to solve this supply chain problem? It's like, we'll just reduce the population. Yeah. Do you know, like it's, it doesn't have to be sinister. Do you know what I mean? Sinister is just a judgment. The, you know what like, I mean? Yeah. It just means like, less. I, I've been seeing, um, <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing a lot lately of comparisons with Bill Gates and oh, man, I can't remember the character's name, but it, he's, he's the main bad guy from uh, the Avengers, um, the purple guy. I forget his name. Thanos. Um, Thanos. Yeah, exactly. Thanos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, you know, the main story or plot line is that he's trying to reduce the population by half in oh, order really? to save the population. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. And so, you know, we, we've talked about before, like, um, 
you know, coming out with movies that impulse you with ideas. And then later, you know, uh, basically those ideas being out in the media as like, this is a good idea to follow or, or whatever. Um, but you've already seen it in movies. And so you've already accepted it as like, oh, that, that could be acceptable, right? Um, this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, people have, I've been talking with people lately who are saying, oh, you know, we are overpopulated and we should be reducing the population at some level. Um, and they're making this comparison of Bill Gates being like Thanos. Um, like he has an altruistic um, goal, but it involves killing half the population. Um, I need to uh, stop short because Katie needs me to help with Max because Seneca needs a nap. She's texting me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm going to just show everybody this article real quick so they can see because I want, I want to talk about this later, perhaps. All right, but this is the article, it's from Wired. Check this out, okay? Because in here, it makes the argument that there isn't really any definitive research that the masks work, okay? So the point is, <laughs> we should be talking about this, right? So I just wanna make a point of that. You can look it up, Wired story, you can probably see the link there, okay? Um, but at least people have that. Um, but uh, yeah, this was fun. We'll probably have to do more chats like this. I just yeah. got to go support with the nap time for Seneca. Yeah, of course. So yeah, we'll chat again. Thanks, man. Thanks for the chat. Of course, of course. I'll talk to okay. you soon. See you, man. Bye. Peace.